I wonder if we could just spend about 10 seconds with your expectation in mind and see if heaven can invade your space. That's what I told the team earlier in the huddle. Can we give God 10 seconds of your expectation? Forget my message. You guys get the word of God every week. You don't need another message. You need life change. Because your church is heading into a season. I was here when Bishop Pitts was here, and I heard him just prophesy over your church. He prophesied over your pastors. And the thing, the thing is, is that they can only carry so much. They have the vision. But we are co-laborers, obviously with them and obviously with Jesus, right? And so everything that God has designed for this church can't just rest on your pastors. It has to be done with us. Are you with me? So if we come in with a consumer mentality, I'll get mine and I'll go home and then I'll need something from them the next week. That's not my assignment today. My assignment today is to continue the shift and to push the fire of God so that you come back next week. Pastor, what do you need? So can we take 10 seconds to rate our, our, our level of expectation? Not for what I'm going to say, but what God wants to deposit in you to change you. So that we can take this church higher, so that we can impact this city, so that this city will never be the same again. Are you with me? So that we can feel heaven. Are you with me? I'm preaching already, but you can talk back. I'm going to be passionate either way because I love Jesus that much. Can we pray? I'm going to give you the first five seconds to lift up your voice. I'll come in over you. When my voice comes in, you keep going because I believe that heaven's going to invade this spot. Are you with me? Come on. Ready? Go. You lift up the name. Come on. Begin to pray. Your level of expectation where you're watching, you begin to pray. Come on, let's have heaven invade our space today. Come on, your level of expectation. He will exceed your level of expectation, but we have to have it before he ever speaks. Father, we love you today. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. We thank that there's a room full of expectation in this building. God, we declare that we will not leave here the way that we came in. I thank you that bodies will be healed. Lives will be changed. This church will move forward. This church will fulfill every bit of destiny that you've called them to. Protect our pastors as they're away. Let the move of God hit them where they are. Let the move of God hit our online campus. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. Let us leave here differently than when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen? amen? Is anybody else fired up like I am? Anybody else fired up? Look at the person beside you say, sit on the edge of your seat because God's going to talk to you. Sit on the edge of your seat because God's going to talk to you. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'll bring this in here in a second. Are y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so, because I don't like anything quiet. I feel like if you talk back, it becomes like a, an adventure ride. You know what I'm saying? I, I've never been on a roller coaster and just sat there. No matter what. Even if I don't want to scream, I do. Oh, I didn't see that coming. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we can have a little uh, roller coaster ride this morning. Any old schoolers? Up in here, y'all know, roller coaster. Oh, I'm sorry, Pastor Lindsay. I'm the spirit of God just, he just, he's sitting in the chair. First Kings, first Kings, first Kings. I'm going to read two passages of scripture. I'm not going to keep you all day, but I do want to deposit something to you. Two passages of scripture. I'm going to read in first Kings chapter 19. Then we're going to go over to Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to take you around this crazy mountain to end up in Matthew 28. I promise you we will get to you what we need to get to, but I need you to hang with me. Is that all right? We're going to read two passages of Scripture. I'm going to go around the mountain. I'm going to end up in the last passage of Scripture. I'm going to get to you what God has. I promise you, though, that we will have fun. Are you with me? So don't get lost. Don't get lost. Don't think, well, what happened to Matthew 28? Because we will get there, but I got to go to 1 Kings 19 first. Are you here? 1 Kings 19, 3 through 4. It says this. It says, Elijah was afraid, and he ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom tree, also known as a juniper tree, sat down under it, say under it, under it. and prayed that he might die. Pause. I'll get to the second one in a second. Context. Elijah has a friend. He says, come with me. While he's going on the journey, he tells the friend that he has to come with me. You stay here. I'm going to go by myself. He goes a day's journey into an isolated place 
after he had asked his friend to come with him. He finds himself in a dry place sitting under a tree when he had his friend come with him that he told him to stay sitting under a tree. He tells himself, I want to die. Got that? Matthew chapter 28. Don't worry, I'm going to come back to 1 Kings because that was too short of a story. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28 says this. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Say sat on it. Sat on it. So we have a sat under and we have a sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to, to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He ain't here. He is risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Come and see the place where he lay. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Change us in Jesus' name. Amen. First Kings chapter 19. We find a man by the name of Elijah. Elijah is a prophet of God, which means that he hears what God says, he responds to what God says, and then he receives what God says. Are you here? He hears what God says, responds to what God says, and then he receives what God says. Elijah is a crazy prophet, meaning like, that's a slang word for he's got game, He's, he, 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 he's got it. He's, he, he, he walks in the power of God. When he declares something from God, it happens. The Bible says that Elijah was so smooth in his relationship with God that he said, it's not going to rain. And it stopped raining. That's a bad dude. Right now, I wish I could declare rain for Pastor Richard and AC to appear in his room. If I did that and that happened, that would freak him out, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Because, because that just came out of nowhere and it just happened. Elijah rolled like that. The Bible says that he says, it's not going to rain until I come back and tell you. He declares that and the Bible says that he was hungry. So the Lord sent ravens, a dirty bird, to, to bring him bread and meat morning and night. How many of y'all would like to be you know, at work, and you forgot your lunch money. And you're like, I'm hungry. And out of nowhere, Popeye's chicken, <laughs> red beans and rice, appears at your desk. That would freak you out. You would say, I am walking with the Lord. <laughs> Me personally, I'd do a whole crusade off of that alone. <laughs> Elijah, it won't rain. I'm hungry. Popeye's chicken. Morning and night. Dude's bad. He goes to a widow's house, and God says to him, ask her for something to eat. She says, I've got a bin, a flour, jar of oil. I was about to make myself something, and my son and I, we were going to die. He says, go ahead and bake your cake. But before you bake your cake, I'd like a piece of it. She goes and gets it. And the Bible says that as she's making something for him, the jar doesn't go out, the flour doesn't end, because she gave him the cake first. He's speaking what God says, not going to rain. I want something to eat. Give me that cake. Miracles are happening all around. The woman's son gets sick. She says, hey, I gave you that cake. Did you bring something into my house? He goes and grabs the boy, lays the boy on the bed that he was staying on. He says three times, Lord, what are you going to do? Lord, what are you going to do? Heal this boy. The boy wakes up. He says, here's your son. Everything that he is a part of, that God's a part of, produces the results that God sees. Are you with me so far? I'm trying to get us to Matthew because I promised you I would. 
he's dealing with, with all those sorts of things. God's doing miracles. He comes to this place where the king has prophets of Baal residing. And he says, now listen, Israel, you have got to make a decision. Either God's your God, Baal's your God, but pick one. He gets real cocky. He says, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's see how bad your God is. He says, what we're going to do, we're going to create this altar. All right? Kill the beast, bring him down. You go ahead and call fire down. Nothing happens. Starts laughing. He says, I'll tell you what. There's water. Let's make it hot. Call fire down. Nothing happens. He says, let me show you how amazing my God is. Watch this. Fire fall down. <gasps> Consumes the altar. Y'all are talking about fire, right? How many of us really want the fire of God to fall? Because when the fire of God falls, it shakes up the things that we got comfortable with. That'll preach. That's not in my notes, but I'm not preaching that. I'll come do that next time. He calls down the fire of God. The fire falls. After the fire falls... He tells the people that are working with him, he says, go get the 450 prophets of Baal. We're going to take them out right now. Kills them all. Jackie chans them. <laughs> oh. Ah, Bruce Lee. Oh, I was just watching Enter the Dragon the other day. <laughs> Bowie Lo Yang had nothing on him. This dude is crazy. It won't rain. I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. Your son's dead, I'll bring him back to life because when I hear God say something, I respond to what he says and I receive the results that I believe that he's going to give me. But he runs into a problem. Ahab has a, a girl on the side, her name is Jezebel. Jezebel says, oh, ho, ho. you one of those, huh? You hear what God says. You respond to what God says, and you receive what God says. Well, let's see how you handle this. I'm coming after you, and if I don't kill you by tomorrow, may the dogs eat me. Fire from heaven. Come alive, boy. Give me something to eat. Before you eat that, give me something. Watch what God does. I'll kill you tomorrow. 1 Kings 19. We hear. The story says that he hears what she says, and it says that he runs with his servant, tells his servant, you stay here. After I asked you to come, you stay here. I'm going a day's journey because I need to be by myself. Finding himself sitting under a tree, wishing he could die. How many times have we responded to what God said received what God said, heard what God said, but we found ourselves pushing away the community of maybe our church or our friends when the enemy gives an attack. Can I tell you that as soon as you receive what God said, you heard what God said, you begin to respond to what God said, the enemy goes, oh, they serious. Do you think the enemy is going to allow you to build a brand new building and it's going to be easy? He's not going to go, yeah. <laughs> Do you think the enemy wants you to be planted in a life-giving church? Do you think the enemy really wants you to believe that your tithe is an act of worship or is it really the church wants your money? He will challenge you. Why? Because he knows that the end result of your faith in God produces the miracles that heaven sees. Are you with me? It won't be easy. And so he finds himself... Tired after he's seen the tangible manifestation of God. He's living it out. Even some of the things that you and I haven't seen yet. You and I are a product of the miracle working power of God. I can prove it to you. I don't need to know your life. I don't need to know what you're walking through. The fact that you walked in here today is a sign that he who began a good work in you is in the process of being faithful to complete it. You walked in here, which means that the next minute of your life, he's got purpose designed for you. The next day of your life, you have to walk into with expectation because he started it. Elijah says, everything that God's done right now doesn't matter because 
I'm focusing on what she said. I'm going to respond to what she said, and I'm going to receive what she said. Can you see the contrast between receiving what God said, responding to what God said, and hearing what God said produces miracles. When I respond to what the enemy says, receive what the enemy says, and then, and then hear what the enemy says, I retreat. So he finds himself sitting under a tree. Telling himself that there is no victory for me anymore. Here's what's amazing. He said, I always thought that the wilderness was dry. If you study out, there's a difference between the wilderness and the desert. The desert is a dry place. The wilderness has trees. It's, it's, it's the terrain that we have to navigate through. In, in, in Isaiah chapter 43, he said, I'll make a road in the wilderness. 19. Why not water? He said, I'll put the river in the desert, but I'll put the road in the wilderness. See, you and I will go through the wilderness, but the wilderness is designed for the terrain. It's designed to allow you to be sh shifty. You will have to work through some obstacles. But I find it amazing that he found a dry place. He found an isolated place underneath a tree. He found it as his dry place. He found the only place that he felt like he was supposed to be. He asked his friend to come. And then he told his friend, don't need you. How many times have you and I been going through something? We ask our friend to pray. They start praying, and then we say, not right now. Maybe you're in an isolated place right now because the thing that the enemy has told you, you've received, you've heard, and you've responded. So he's sitting under it. Here's what's really amazing is that the place where he sat underneath the broom tree, let me show you. This is what's crazy. He found himself under a broom tree in a dry place. Watch now. The broom tree was used sometimes as a resource for poor people because it was their extreme need. Watch this. Job chapter 30, 3 through 4 says this. They are gaunt from poverty and hunger. They claw the dry ground in desolate wastelands. They pluck wild greens from among the br bushes and eat from the roots of broom trees. When you find yourself responding to the enemy's voice, you will be pulling from places that God never designed for you to eat from. You will be in relationships. You will be listening to people who are not designed to be in your life. You'll just be plucking and it'll seem like the right place, but you'll be sitting under in relationships with friendships, having things in your life that God never designed for you. Because we hear what the enemy says. We receive what he says. And we respond to what he says. It's the same action that produces the miracle. It's the difference between being comfortable in this building or building a new building that will allow more people to come into a relationship with God. You and I can be comfortable or we can say, I've heard what God said, Pastor. I'll respond to what God said and I'm going to receive what he said. It's the difference between victory and being under something. Are you here? So Elijah's this bad dude. I mean, he's, he's, he's off the chain. Miracles, signs, wonders, fire from heaven under a tree. If you're taking notes, here's what I realize. And I said all that to give you a couple of thoughts. Where I sit matter. Where I sit matters. I have to be aware of where I sat. See, some of us sat strategically today. Some of us were sat by, by, the, by the ushers. Some of you sat because you, 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 you frequent the bathroom, so you got to sit on the end. Some of you have children, so you just sat them in the back because you don't want to make noise. Some of you are military, so you don't sit too far away from the exit. 
You have to respond. You want to be able to see everything in front of you. See, where you physically sit today doesn't really matter, but where your soul sit does. That's the point of what I'm trying to, trying to get to today is that where you sit matters. The Bible says in Psalms 1, it says, now, blessed is the man who does not find himself standing in the wrong place or sitting in the seat of the scornful. Some of us sit in relationships that we know are toxic. And we're asking God to bless us. And God's like, your butt's sitting in the wrong seat. And you know it. You know what you watch is not healthy. You know what you listen to is not healthy. You know that attitude that you have is not healthy. But you're comfortable there. And you're arguing with me about why I'm not doing something. The reason why I'm not doing something because I already did something. But you heard the enemy and you've responded to what he said. And you received what he said. And you heard what he said. Watch where you sit. Because where you sit matters. The question I have this morning, just so you can think about it as I continue, is where are you sitting right now? Where is your soul sitting? Elijah was tired. Elijah was doing everything he could for God, but forgot about the worship to God. He was just working. Some of us work and we work and we work 60 hours, 50 hours doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, and we forget about the one who told us. Y'all all right? Y'all not mad at me, are you? Where I sit matters. I wrote this down if you're taking notes. It's okay to sit down, but where my soul chooses to sit, that's what's significant. It's okay to sit down and have a rest, y'all, but where I rest my mind, my will, and my emotions, that's what matters most. I can sit down. But the minute I allow my soul to rest in an unhealthy place, I want to throw in the towel. It's the minute that I go, God, even though I've seen your hand, that is insignificant right now because this is the attack. It's okay to sit down but where my soul chooses to sit. That's the significant thing. Psalms 13 Verse 2 says, how long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? The, 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 the psalmist is saying, look, I'm worn out. And it looks like the enemy is winning. How long will this be? Can I tell you that where you sit matters? All the way around the mountain, it brings us to Matthew chapter 28. And in Matthew chapter 28, we find that there is an awesome story. It says that the Lord sent down an angel. This is so cool to me. And the Bible says that the angel came down from heaven and started walking. This is how I see everything in, in pictures in Bible stories. So I don't know how the angel walked. The angel could have walked real glorious. I don't know. But I feel like the angel was walking like this. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Maybe, maybe the angel was walking really, really, really angel-like. I, really, I don't really know. But here's, you can put it in your own mind. The angel, the Bible says, was walking on the road. How awesome is that? Is that the angel was walking. The angel could have just showed up. But the Bible says that the angel was walking on the road and got to the tomb, took the stone, and rolled the stone away. I don't know. Again, my imaging. I don't know if the angel was like, oh, this is too. Or oh, I don't know if they, the angel was just like, all right, let's go. What I do know is that the Bible says that the angel was looking like lightning dressed in white. And it says that the angel moved the stone away and all of the earth began to quake and the men who were guarding it became like dead men. But then it says something that's amazing to me. It says that the angel in all of its glory, in all of its splendor, decided to sit on the stone. I don't, personally, I don't think the angel was trying to be real fancy. I just think the angel was like, whenever they arrive, I'll be ready. <laughs> the angel, the Bible says, was sitting on the stone. 
Why didn't the angel stand? Same result. I believe that the angel was showing us something about the victory of God. The thing that was designed to hold Jesus back was his victory. So the angel was letting us know that where I sit matter. I'm going to sit on the thing that they tried to hold him down. So that when people come to look at it, I can let them know that the victory that was promised you is the same victory that you're walking out. He said it, you receive it, and therefore you should respond. He's not here. Here's what's amazing. I don't know if the angel had short legs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's what makes the Bible so much fun. Like, <laughs> right? How cool is that? Like, honestly, when you put the picture in your mind, like, he's like waiting and he's like. <laughs> I don't know. But here's what I know. Is that he was sitting on the thing that everyone thought had defeated the king. So the women come, and they say, um, uh, he, uh, um, uh, Jesus. And the angel's like, no, 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 no. Remember what he told you? Um, you came looking, okay. But you now have to receive what he said. He ain't here. He gone. Uh, so what he was saying was, when you receive what he said, you hear what he says, and then you respond, you will see the miracle, come on, y'all, yeah. that he promised. Yeah. See, these girls walked in, and he confirms what they heard, what they should receive, and how they should respond. It happens everywhere, and so the thing that they saw was an empty tomb, which was the miracle. Three days later, I'm going to walk out here. You're going to come back here. You ain't going to see nothing. I tell you this morning that if you will receive what he says, respond to it, and hear what he says, you will see the miracles of God. But you have to watch where you sit. You have to watch where you sit. The angel could have, the angel could have easily just said, he's not here. But the angel said, for all of time's sake, I'm going to let you know that the victory is sitting on it. The victory is sitting on it. Watch, watch, I'm going to prove it. His, I wrote this down. I can either sit under my circumstance or I can sit on them, but I can't do both. You pick. If you want the fire of God, figure out where you're sitting. I can't sit in both places. The Bible says if, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him, in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Can I tell you, watch now, where you sit matters because all of heaven knows that you have a seat beside the king of all kings. So when you're sitting under something and Jesus is trying to have a conversation with you, his normal response is like this. Hey, how's everything going? How's your week? What are you dreaming about? Keep believing. I'm with you. Because Ephesians chapter 2 says that we're seated right beside him. But yet I wonder if sometimes he goes, how's your week? And then he has to go like this because we're here. And we're like, Jesus, Jesus, will you please respond? Jesus, will you please show up? Where are you? I'm praying. I'm believing. Where are you? And he's like. Why did you get out of your seat? So we're supposed to have this eye to eye. But so many times we're sitting under things that were never designed for us. Because we're responding, receiving, and hearing the wrong voice. And that's the one that we're following. You can either sit under it, sit over it, but you can't do both. Here's what's amazing, is if Jesus has designed a seat for me, it really doesn't matter 
if I'm sitting in the back row or the front row. All I know is that the seat that he's designed for me, he's sitting beside me. Are you here? I had this crazy experience in March. This is really crazy. Please don't let me lose you. <laughs> but I got this opportunity to go on this game show. When I got on the game show, they had two people like come over to me. One was an attendant and one was a producer of the show. The attendant said, sir, come with me. All right, you with me? Come. And as I was about to go with her to sit in one seat, a producer from the show said, no, 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 no. I have a seat for him. So I walked in and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I started walking and then I was like, Wait a second. Where are we going? Oh, back here. Oh, we back here in the back. In the very back, I was sitting in the very back. <laughs> Did you notice how I emphasized the very back? But the craziest thing happened when I sat in the seat that the producer had pre-planned for me. Check this video out. Welcome back, everybody, to The Price is Right. Let's get somebody down here in front, George Gray. Who you got? Drew, it's Damon Moore. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Hi, Damon. Welcome to the show. Uh, next prize, please. The prize is a car audio package. Get directions, listen to music, and dictate messages with this center console display from SoundStream. It includes one amplifier, four speakers, an installation kit, and a subwoofer. Thank you, James. Damon, final contestant, what do you bid? 780. 780. 780. Good luck. Michaela. 877. 877. Nikita. I'm going to say 900. $900. Good luck. Amanda. 901. 901. Actual retail price $870. David. Wow. That was crazy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Warning, anything you can, can and say end up in my next sermon. Oh, Damon, how you doing? Got preacher Damon here right here. George, better watch your P's and Q's. Damon, if you believe, <laughs> you'll see a brand new car! <laughs> so we're playing a game called Lucky 7. Here's the Lucky 7. That's $7 for you. I'm going to show you the first number of the price of this car. It's a Honda Civic LX. First number is a 2. You're going to give me all the next numbers in a row. And for every number you're off, I'm going to take a dollar away from you. And you need one dollar at the end of the game to buy the Honda office. Just one dollar. So you got to be pretty close in each number because you have four numbers to give me, but only six dollars to lose. All right? Next number, Honda Civic LX. <laughs> Make sure I know what's in it. <laughs> three. How about a three? A one. That's close. I'll take $2, thank you. Next one, please. Seven. Seven, please. Oh! I'll take another $2. You have $2 left, two numbers to give me. You gotta be really close. Seven. Seven again. Nine! Take your final two. Damon. I'm gonna win this one. You're walking down a, you're walking down the road. There's a burning bush. The burning bush says, I'll give you a one out of ten chance to win a brand new car. Just give me the number. That's all I need. Three. Three. Good luck. Here we go. See a three. Yes! 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 Come on.
sir? You want to go here? No, 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 no. Sir, we have a seat for you. <laughs> Damon Moore! I heard my name. Come on down! I better respond. 700 and whatever it was, I received the prize. Where you sit matters. If I followed the voice of the regular attendant versus the one that makes the decision for the show. The last number that I chose, I know this is going to sound real crazy. This is what I told the Lord. I said, Lord, you got me here. This is a crazy moment. I'm going to give you glory and no one else will know. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. No one will ever know, win or lose, you're going to get the glory because this is a crazy, stupid moment that no one can ever take away. It's going to be for your glory. If there was a B3 organ, I would have went shouting there. <laughs> Here's what I realized. Just so y'all know, I showed that, that video because Pastor Rich was like, I don't care what you preach about, but you tell the church about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want y'all to think I deal with pride. I just obey those who cover me. You know what I'm saying? I obey. I was like, yes, sir. I might be preaching about revelations, but that will end up in there. <laughs> yes, it will. I won't be out of line. No, I won't. No, I won't. Here, here, here's what I realized. Is the thing that was meant to bring your defeat can become your seat. The issue of your life, the struggle of your life can become your victory. You walked in here with something today. I want to tell you that Jesus has a seat right beside you. You're seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. The tomb was empty. He's not there. I was just in Israel it's empty. <laughs> Nobody's there. It's all just a myth. Today, if I could pray with you, I want to pray that the issue of your life, you sit on top of. Will you bow your heads? Close your eyes. You walked in here this morning, you say, Damon, I've been sitting underneath some things and I need to sit on top of it. Would you just raise your hand real quickly for me? Yeah. I know. I know. Keep that hand up. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to pray for those of you who are going to come into a fresh relationship with God. Father, I thank you that you've seated us in a place of victory. We didn't walk in here by accident. We walked in here because we wanted to have an encounter with you. No more games. No more allowing the enemy to dictate the avenues of victory. No, God. I just declare today the word of the Lord that there is victory in this house. I just pray, Lord God, that we receive it. We respond hear it. I thank you for victory moving through every aisle with every person that has their hand up. I think that they're going to see a tangible change as they leave. Faith is going to come out of their mouth. You're breaking places. You're mending places. And the very tangible presence of God is moving. I thank you that you planted them in this church for this season. They're in the right place at the right time. While your hands are lifted, I just want to declare to you, I feel like some of you have been praying, like, Lord, is this the place? Is this the place? I want to tell you, you are in the right place. You are in the right place. God is going to grow you. God is going to grow your family. God is going to grow your marriage. You are in the right place. Hear me. That is the word of the Lord to you. You've been praying. God says, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. God, seal us today with your word. Seal us today with your dream. Let's leave here changed. In Jesus' name. You can put those hands down while your head's still bow. You walked in here this morning. You say, well, Damon, yeah, I, I have an issue, but I also need to meet Jesus for the very first time. Or maybe you've been away. It's two different prayers. One, you might be walking with the Lord. I want to deal with that issue. We, God just moved that out of the way. The second one is you came in here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. That's what I'm dealing with right now. I'm going to pray a prayer, and all I want you to do is just pray it after me. You'd say, Damon, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I'm going to say a simple prayer. It goes like this. It's like, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Change me completely. 
And all I want you to do is just pray quietly. Then I'm going to ask who prayed that prayer so that I can see who I prayed with and who heaven is celebrating for. Here we go. Dear Jesus, today I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I acknowledge that you died and that you rose again. I accept you boldly today as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, would you just wave at me? Pray that prayer this morning. Yeah. See you. See you. Father, I thank you for what you did today. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. Change us completely. Come on, City Place Church. Come on. You and I have to watch where we sit. As we pursue God's dreams for our life, if we allow God to do it in this year, the enemy would throw blows to try to make us sit in a place where God never designed for us. God designed you and I to sit in a place where we can look over our circumstance and our situation and say, God did it. Come on, somebody, can you say God did it? Well, right where you are, those of you who are watching today, we want to make sure that you leave knowing that God's for you. We want to make sure that you leave with a relationship with Jesus. And right where you are, I want to give you an opportunity to meet Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to walk in relationship with him. I want to make sure that where you're seated is not in the place where you feel defeated or you feel disconnected with Jesus, but that you walk in relationship with him. And so I'm going to say a prayer, and I just want you to pray this prayer after me. And then after you pray this prayer, I want you to communicate with us and let us know the decision that you made. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose again, that he comes and lives on the inside of you. And today is your day to meet Jesus. Today is for you the day where you move from where you're sitting and you move into a relationship with God. Or maybe you move from, from where you are into a fresh relationship with Jesus. And so right where you are, I want you to just pray this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, today I come to you. I need you like never before. I acknowledge that you died for me and you rose again. And today I accept you freely as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, City Place. Can you make some noise for Jesus right where you are? Can you make some noise for those that made a decision to follow Jesus? Now, here's just a couple of quick next steps. I want to encourage you to fill out that connection card that I mentioned earlier. I want you to uh, let us know the decision you made. You can find the connection card at cityplacechurch.com backslash card. Or you can text the word city place, one word, city place, to 94000 and say, I choose to follow Jesus. You'll also have an opportunity to be a part of our Next Steps class. Our Next Steps class is where we come around you because we believe that everyone, God has given everyone an opportunity to be a part of a life-giving church. And this is where we come around you. We help you discover family. We help you discover your fit and how God created you and how your purpose in God. So if you will, just fill out your connection card and uh, or you can text and our team will come around you and give you some additional next steps and correspondence on the decision that you made today. So on behalf of all of City Place Church, my wife, Taisha, well done on the decision that you made. One of the other things that we're going to get ready to do today as we get ready to go into the rest of our day and you continue your day is that we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. We believe that God has called our church to live, to give. And one of the ways that we can represent Jesus is through generosity. As a church, every single week we gather together, we worship, we, we sing songs, we jump into God's word, we're challenged and we're changed. But as a church, one of our core values is that we live to give. And so we're going to continue to be generous for the kingdom of God. We're constantly giving locally. We're constantly giving throughout the United States and literally around the world. And so I'm just encouraged by us continuing to partner together, saying, God, in this house, we're going to be faithful. In this house, we're going to trust you. And God, you have my heart. You have my kingdom finances. And God, put it to work. And so we are going to continue to give locally. But hey, as a church, we are also literally strategically positioning kingdom finances so that when God gives us an opportunity to walk into our own permanent facility, that we are resourced well. And so you're going to hear us talking about 
uh, you know, our, our building that we're believing the Lord for. And we're going to dream about, about the impact that it can make in our community. And the way we do that is through our kingdom finances. So we give outside of our church, but then we also allow God to use the kingdom finances to help build a permanent house to where it will become a home for so many people in our community. And so as you give, our team's putting up the information and we're going to just pray and just ask the Lord to bless everything that we put back in his hand. And then we're going to pray for the rest of your day. Father, we love you today. We thank you that as we sow today, God, we honor you. We thank you for entrusting us with your kingdom finances, but Lord, we return it back to you. We thank you for giving us opportunities to be generous as a church. But Lord, we also thank you for uh, giving us the facility and the building that will become home to so many people who don't know you yet. And for those of you who call City Place home, God, we know that you're going to give us a, a location that allows to, us to be a pillar in the community where people can come to learn, to grow, to have fun and know more about you. We honor you today as we give. We thank you for the lives that we're changing, we're met, that met you today, that decided they're not going to stay where they're sitting, but that they're going to chase after you. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, City Place Church, have a great week. We love you, and we can't wait to see you again next week right back here at City Place Church.